What's good? It's Wug. We are talking Janelle Monet, who is set to drop her fourth album, The Age of Pleasure, on June 9th. And the reason I really want to talk about Janelle Monet is because I feel like she's one of the most fascinating and in a way misunderstood artists of like the past 12 or so years. She debuted with the Arc Android album in 2010. But Janelle Monet is one of the more eclectic, vibrant artist that we've had in recent memory and she is one of the rare artists I feel that has not missed with any of her album releases like it's a small club when you really think about it who has dropped album after album and she doesn't have a long discography I mean she only has again this is going to be her fourth album and she had the Metropolis Suite 1 the Chase EP before the Arc Android but I mean, who would you look at as artists who have not missed a step with any of their album releases? Like, I remember when Arcade Fire was three albums in, they were pretty much hitting on every one. It was Funeral, Neon Bible, and The Suburbs. If you look at uh, Kendrick Lamar, he's probably one of the more fantastic examples of that. You've got Outkast, who pretty much, you could argue, outdid themselves, basically, with every album release. Kanye West's first five or six albums, Vampire Weekend, there are a few, but Janelle Monet has been super consistent when you consider the Arc Android from 2010, the Electric Lady from 2013, and then Dirty Computer from 2018. I find each of these three albums to be pretty fantastic, especially the Arc Android, and we're going to get into that one. But Janelle Monet in recent weeks has been making headlines for having a lot of sexualized imagery as she was releasing her new single, Lipstick Lover. But if you think about it, this isn't totally new for Janelle Monet. Yes, you know, the flashing is a bit new for her, but in terms of the messaging of her music, I mean, she came into the music scene as kind of an, an outcast if you will. In fact, a lot of people were kind of likening her musical mannerisms to Andre 3000 when she was coming out at first with the Many Moons song from that Metropolis EP. I remember some of the publications, they were really like hyping her. They were saying, hey, keep your eye on Janelle Monet." And again, this is before she debuted with her first album. She had just had the EP. She was signed to Bad Boy Records, which she still is. A lot of people don't even realize that she's been signed to Bad Bad Boy for like at least the last 16 years, but the musician, the actress, Janelle Monet, she has always been highly unusual. And I remember when she first came out with that single, Tightrope, when she was about to release her Arc Android album. And these performances that she would perform on, you know, late night shows and on TV appearances as she was emerging with that tightrope single, she was being likened to like James Brown because of her showmanship. She was being likened to like Prince because of her, how musically eclectic she is. I mean, it would be a lazy categorization to call her like R&B or soul because when you think about it when she broke with the Arc Android who did she have featured you know she had Big Boy from Outkast featured on Tightrope but towards the end of her album she's got the indie band of Montreal in fact when she was touring the Arc Android of Montreal was her opener and then I mean in her Dirty Computer third album look at some of the features she has I mean she opens the album with a feature from Brian Wilson of the Beach Boys she's got Zoe Kravitz she She's got Grimes on her single Pink. So you can't really just peg her down into one or even two categories. She could get funky. I mean, listen to, again, Tightrope and several songs from The Electric Lady and The Arc Android. Uh, she can get very soulful. She could get dreamy, dream pop. Listen to Sir Green Down from The Arc Android. She could get very indie and rockish. And then listen to her single from Dirty Computer, Make Me Feel. She it sounds very Prince-like. So those are major boxes that she checks as an artist. Again, not only her album over album consistency, but also her out of this world live performances. Like she is one of the better performers on the music landscape and has been since she started off with that Arc Android album. I mean, I remember shooting her at the, just down the street really, uh, in Long Beach. It was the Music Taste Good Festival. This was around 2017. And I shot three of her songs. One of them was the title track, The Electric Lady from that second 
album, The Electric Lady, and she just performed her butt off. I mean, check that out on YouTube if you get a chance. She takes no prisoners. She's a great vocalist live. She moves live. And again, she just keeps the crowd entertained and involved in what's going on on the stage. There's always a lot of dancing. There's some imagery. There could be props. It's just super well coordinated. Again, look at her early performances when she was performing the tightrope when she was just breaking as a new artist. And that album that tightrope is on, the Arc Android, I still think that that is probably her best overall album. Yes, I like The Electric Lady. Yes, I like Dirty Computer. Yes, I cannot wait for her new album, The Age of Pleasure. But the Arc Android from beginning to end, especially that first half of the album, it's about as good as it gets. In fact, I would like put it up there with arguably the best album of 2010 if it wasn't for Kanye West dropping My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy right towards the end of the year. Like if you look at how critically acclaimed the Arc Android was, and then you look at the other top albums of that year, and it was a very stacked year of excellent albums. I mean, you had Arcade Fire's The Suburbs. You had Deer Hunter's Halcyon Digest. You had uh, Teen Dream by Beach House. That's the one with Norway, uh, Zebra, Silver Soul, which Kendrick Lamar and his producers sampled for Money Trees. Great album. My, prop, one of my favorite two Beach House albums dropped that year. Teen Dream, uh, that was the same year as LCD Sound Systems, This Is Happening. It was the same year as uh, Big Boy from Outkast, Sir Lucius Left Foot, uh, The National dropped High Violet, Gorillaz dropped Plastic Beach, Vampire Weekend dropped their second album, Contra, very good album. I mean, you could tell, right? This 2010 year was stacked. Uh, Black Keys dropped Brothers, that's the one with Tighten Up, right before the El Camino album. Not to mention Eminem dropping Recovery, and Drake dropping his debut album, Thank Me Later. 2010 was stacked, and you would be hard-pressed still to find an album better than the Arc Android. Again, when you kick this thing off, it's got that track too, with the, and these streets are forever, with uh, Saul Williams, Android, Cyborg. Th this was a great track too, and it's got a very dreamy track one. And then by the time you get to maybe my favorite song on that album, it's after Sir Green Down. The song is called Cold War. Give that a listen. In fact, listen to that album up to Cold War. You are so emotionally invested by that point because these are all concept albums. She's basically this fictitious character, Cindy Mayweather, who's being sent to save the people from, I think it's called the Great Divide, which is supposed to use time travel to suppress uh, freedom and love. So Cindy Mayweather, I mean, I remember on that Cold War song, she was like, I was made to believe something was wrong with me and it breaks my heart. Listen, and that is, I believe, her verse two from Cold War. Cold War might be my favorite song from Janelle Monet. Fantastic. But the album, song after song, the Arc Android, leading up to that, I kind of look at it as being the centerpiece of the album, Cold War. Just listen to the sequencing of that album and you will be enraptured and engulfed by the time you get to Cold War. So yeah, Janelle Monet. Fantastic artist, album over album consistency. Again, she has not missed a step. And although her celebrity has grown, I wonder if this will be her first drop off with the age of pleasure. I mean, it's got to be extremely difficult to maintain that high standard and that bar that you've set for yourself with your album over album consistency. I just wonder if the age of pleasure is going to how it's going to stack up against those other three albums. And those three albums, by the way, they have very different vibes. The Electric Lady is very different from the Arc Android. Dirty Computer is different from both of those. Not only in the different genre switch-ups, but in the overall like sonic palette. And I also love how she mostly sticks with the same producers throughout her career. We're talking Nate, Rocket, Wonder, and Chuck Lightning. They have been her producers throughout those three albums. I like the consistency there and they are super slept on super underrated it's almost like you know how bruno mars's production outfit you have shampoo press and curl and before that you had the smeezingtons kind of his writing collective and he's kind of kept things within that realm throughout his career janelle monet sticks to her guns as well and i think that it really shines 
through the music. So yeah, Janelle Monet, I can't wait for this new album. You know, her acting career, I think, is going to start taking off more and more too. I remember a few years ago, I was watching this show that she was on called Homecoming. It was on, uh, I think, Amazon Prime. She was on the season two of Homecoming. And I'm like, go ahead, Janelle. But yeah, Janelle Monet, one of my favorite artists of the past 15 years. I think that as good as she's been, she has almost become, you know, she's become pretty iconic. Like you see her in different fashion shows, right? And she's almost kind of becoming like a, like a fashionista and she's a very culturally relevant figure. I think that some of those things are taking so much of the attention that people are almost not aware or have forgotten how good she has been musically throughout her career. She's an outlier. This isn't your typical pop star who is more famous than she is good. No, she was extraordinarily good. So she started to build her reputation and now she happens to be pretty damn famous. But yeah, if you haven't listened to Janelle Monet's discography, please give The Arc Android, The Electric Lady, and then Dirty Computer a listen. And hopefully before she releases this Age of Pleasure album. And if you are a Janelle Monet fan already, let me know what your three favorite songs are and what your favorite Janelle Monet album is. And please like the video, subscribe to the channel if you love music like I do. I'm Woog. Thanks for tuning in.